Despite a chaotic finish <laughs> to <laughs> last season in Mile High, you don't know which one he is I was talking to. Russell Wilson says he hopes to spend the rest of his career with the Broncos, Shannon's former team. Wilson, who was benched for the final two games last season, despite being told to sit down, says he still hopes to make amends in Denver. Listen up, guys. I got more fire than ever, honestly, especially over the past two years of what I've gone through. Whether if it's in Denver or somewhere else, I, I hope it's in Denver. I committed there. I wanted to be there. You know, I want to be there. For me, it's about winning. Over the next five years, I want to win two. I want to feel the chill of that trophy again. I want to win more Super Bowls there. You know, I, I love the city and everything else. But, you know, you also want to be a place that, that wants you too. We bring in our quarterback, Tim Hasselbeck. Tim, fantastic to see you. It has been a minute. Thank you so much for joining us. But I'm going to start with Shannon here because this mm -hmm. is his old stomping grounds. Uh, <laughs> Shay, will Russell Wilson be a starter next season in the NFL? What's the deal here? Look, obviously we know the teams, uh, Stephen A and Tim, that has starting quarterbacks that he's not a viable option, like the Kansas City, the Cincinnati's, the, uh, the Chargers, and things of that nature. But are you telling me that they're not – Ten, at least 10 teams that Russell isn't currently better, the Steelers. Yes. Are you trying to tell me he's not better than what you have right now? Of course. I, it's hard for me to believe that yeah. the Raiders, is he not better than what's in, what's in uh, uh, Las Vegas right now? So I believe he could, and look, even if he's not a starter, he's probably an injury away from being a starter on a lot of teams that maybe has a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't believe Russ is going to be back. Uh, I don't think he and, and Sean Payton ever meshed. I think he came, uh, Sean Payton came in and heard some of the things that were going on in Denver, and he held that against him. Because you know a lot of times you say, okay, you get a clean state slate, Stephen A. You know, you get a new ball, so whatever they may have heard about us, we get a clean slate. I don't, be I don't believe Sean Payton ever gave Russ that clean slate. And it kind of, he, maybe he rubbed some people the wrong way. Right. But I don't believe Russ is going to be in, that sit be in Denver next year. And no the way. biggest win that the Broncos have had since they last won the Super Bowl you asked the man to take a pay cut, and you thought he was going to be okay with that? You could have asked him at the beginning of the season. You could have asked him at any other point other than when you asked him. But you asked him after the biggest win since they last won the Super Bowl. They beat Kansas City. They beat Kansas City. And you asked the man, do you know how hard it is that Russ had? I don't think Russ at that point had ever lost a road game mm -hmm. in the AFC West. So Denver did something that no other team had done up until that point. And then you ask him to take a pay cut and thought he was going to be okay with that. I do believe he'll be a starter uh, uh, next season because I believe there are some teams. I don't know what the, uh, uh, the Falcons are going to do. Maybe the Falcons make a trade for Justin Fields. Maybe they go get a quarterback in the draft. I don't know. But I think he's better than what they have in Atlanta right now. No question. There's no question in my mind he's better than what they have in Atlanta. So I do believe he'll be a starting quarterback. I don't believe it'll be in Denver, though. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, Shannon, I, I, look, I agree. Like, I don't think there's any doubt that he's one of the best 32 quarterbacks on the planet. Absolutely. I think that, in fairness to Russ, look, he didn't play as poorly last year as I think people are maybe portraying him to have played. I think here's where the rub is. He's made $266 million playing football, and he's due to make another $39 million this year to do nothing. So he's going to end up making, playing football, nearly $300 million by, by changing nothing if, if the Broncos end up cutting him. And why I say that, just for perspective, that will be the fourth most in terms of career earnings ever in the history of the National Football League. So I say that to say, why would Russell Wilson go to a place without the financial guarantee and security that the minute something goes poorly, that the team won't turn their back on them. And I just don't know that Pittsburgh is the spot to say, hey, we have totally turned the page on Kenny Pickett. You are the anointed starter right when you come in here. I just think there's so much risk for Russell Wilson to say, yeah, go ahead and, and pay me league minimum. And if things go poorly, you can no. just go ahead and turn on me. Like, I, that's the part that I don't know. And I'm not questioning whether or not he loves football. I think he clearly loves football. Right. But the amount of humble pie and risk there, I just don't know that, that he'll go through it. Well, let me say this. Let, let, let me tell you where I'm at, Tim and, and Shannon, because you guys know better than me. I'm just going to give you, you know, that scribe opinion covering the media, being in the media for 30 years. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Russell Wilson 
clearly is one of the top 32 quarterbacks yeah. in the National Football League. Clearly, there are several teams that he can start from. We sit up there and we throw shade on him. I will remind everybody, he threw for 3,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. I will remind everybody he's a Super Bowl champion, made two Super Bowl appearances, even though that play should have never been called to and given the beast mode at the half-yard line. Don't get yeah. me started with that. To me, that was the end of the Legion of Boom and everything that was going on mm -hmm. in Seattle. I can't believe that Darry Bevel and, 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 and Pete, Pete Carroll, Carroll okayed that, even though some people say he audible and Russell Wilson made that call. I will say this to you guys. The man has never thrown more than 13 interceptions in the season. And he only did that once. Right. Every other season he's been in the NFL, Tim, Shannon, it's been 11 or less. The man doesn't turn the ball over much. So now, I get where you're coming from, Tim, with the money, and I totally understand that, right? But what I'm saying to you is if you're Russell Wilson, you are a champion, if you still believe in yourself, you can't worry about what Tim just highlight it. I'm not saying you're wrong, Tim, by any stretch. I'm saying he can't be worried about that. You can ball or you can't. And when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, their roster ain't shabby. You got running backs. You got right. wide receivers. You got Frymouth at the tight end spot. On the defensive side of the ball, T.J. Watt's healthy. Fitzpatrick and those boys ready to roll. You got a team. They were in the playoffs this year. Right. With Kenny Pickett as their quarterback. With Mason Rudolph as their quarterback, okay? I'm looking at it from this perspective. If you got a guy like a Russell Wilson, who's not going to turn the football over, who still has the ability to extend plays, who can throw with accuracy, particularly with the deep ball. If you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, look, man, yeah, yeah, beggars can't be choosy. Look at what the hell you had. Look at what you've been working with. I mean, we can't be too picky here, okay? Now, now do I think that Russell w Wilson is the best thing since sliced bread with all the great quarterbacks in the National Football League right now, no. particularly in the NFC? No. But when I think about the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm thinking about the Sean Watson and Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow, within your division, you cannot go into next season with Kenny Pickett Locked, you know, zeroed in. I don't give me any of the three. Any of the three. You can't be choosy. And if you're Russell Wilson to get back to the point with him that you was making, all I'm saying is this. Yeah, you made mm -hmm. your money, but you're a champion. And there were people that were chirping mm -hmm. about you for years. You go to Denver, and let's not completely absolve him. You know this. He went to Denver, and he was kind of feeling himself. Yes. And he was playing by his own rule. I'm, I'm just telling you what the, report, what the reports say, Tim. I don't cover the Denver Broncos. Please don't hold it against yeah. me. But when you listen to the reports, they were saying he arrived. He got the big contract. He got the bag. He came there as a Super Bowl champion. He was really feeling himself, and the rules were different for him. And then suddenly, after Nathaniel Hackett is booted out and Sean Payton comes up in there, he let let you know it was a new day. So I get it. I understand it. But if you're Russell Wilson, you got to show up someplace that you can't be thinking about how mm -hmm. your legacy might look or whatever. Hell with that. It don't look great now. Right. It don't look great mm -hmm. now. It doesn't look great right now, but listen, it could, it could actually end up looking worse because it they could can't. happen a second time. And you don't have the ability to say, like, hey, this team's not going to sit there and be like, no, we can't. Let's let him play through it. That's what I'm saying. And listen, he's tasted the sweet life, Stephen A. Like, you. You, you lined it out. Like, he was playing by different rules. Like, Shannon knows yeah. it. Some guys, man, right. they get two lockers. Some guys yeah. get a, some yeah. guys get an office. I wouldn't know he's anything about that. that. Let me tell you something. Hey, hey, league minimum guys, league minimum guys don't get that. League minimum guys don't get that leash. I, what I am saying is the risk is so significant because, look, he could sign somewhere, go through everything, go through camp, go through everything, three weeks in playing poorly, say he's in Pittsburgh. Now we're going back to picking. Right. Like right. that that could happen. And it gives you a little perspective. Carson Wentz, who hasn't accomplished anything close to no. what Russell Wilson Russ. has. He's made $150 million playing football. Look, he was like, no, man, I'm going to wait until I see a better situation. And he didn't even sign anywhere until week 10 even though other teams did want to bring him in. So I just, like, the mindset changes at this point for Russell Wilson. Go Shannon. I, I, I agree with you, Tim, but when you look at it, the Patriots are available. Is Russell Wilson better than what they have in New England? Yes. Is he better than what they have currently on the roster? Now, Kirk Cousins has an Achilles injury. Does, he, could he be back? Maybe, but I don't think he's going to come back, right, especially at the dollar that he's going to want. But this is what we know about the NFL, Tim, is that once you get released, it's easier for other teams to release you. 
because it's not out of the realm of possibility or probability that it happens. Even for a historically and a great player like Russ, who had the great numbers through the first 10 years, those numbers rival Peyton Manning and any other quarterback as far as touchdowns to interceptions and passing yards. But he didn't play well his first year. He played better his second year. But for whatever reason, he just did not mesh with Sean Payton. And I knew once I saw Sean Payton yell at him, I think it was Detroit. Uh, or it might have been Detroit when they, uh, the lineman jumped off sides. And he's yelling at Russ. I knew it was just a matter of time. Because I've never seen a, a coach excoriate a player of Russ's caliber at that position right, right. like Sean Payton did on that sideline. And so you knew it was just a matter of time. But you, as, as a champion for the Denver Broncos, I ask you this question, especially with Tim on the show with us watching right now. Mm -hmm. When you saw Sean Payton do that, yes. what my position was is that ain't just about football. No. That was about a culture that he believed – Russell Wilson stained or compromised by when he first arrived in Denver and how it went against, and both of you, I'm asking both of you this question, it went against what we customarily see on NFL teams. You don't see or hear about those kind of things from a quarterback right. coming into a situation. And so, and the reason I bring that up, guys, is because even though Sean Payton was wrong to do it, I was paying attention to the reason why he went against Cold in the NFL when he called out Nathaniel Hackett, who Correct. is now gone, and the offensive coordinator in, in, in New York. The Jets. The Jets. I was saying to everybody, wait a minute. I'm not saying he's right. I'm saying it's easy to point the finger at Sean Payton and say that was wrong to do. Given. Totally correct. But why would he do that when he's been associated with the NFL for decades? And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, you're going to call out a guy that's gone, that's gotten fired, or somebody that's a member of the coach of fraternity. It was something about him and Russell Wilson together that really graded Sean Payton's nerves. Am I wrong about that? No, you're not wrong about that. It's kind of like, you know, like you do something – and your grandmother is, is, is explaining it to your grandfather. And the more she tells him, the matter he got. It seemed like to me, whatever transpired in that room, and I'm not going to get back into it sure. because everybody said I was wrong, but it came out, the reports came out where Shannon was absolutely right. right. And it seemed like when they explained to Sean Payton what was transpiring Russ's first year, right. the matter he got. Yes. And the matter he got at Russ, even though he wasn't around to have anything to do with it, he got matter and matter. He got matter and matter, and he expected this is why you lost. Gotcha. This is why I'm saying what I'm saying about Nathaniel Hackett. This is why I'm saying about the culture of the Denver Broncos. Got it. And he never forgave Russ for that. Got it. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I think both of you guys just nailed it. Look, look, the Band-Aid was ripped off, Stephen A., with, with the way Peyton was yelling at him. Shannon, exactly right. Once you're cut, easy to get cut again. Like, you're <laughs> just co-signing what somebody else did. Yes. Like, right. that's exactly what happened. And that's why I think the idea of going somewhere else it, with no financial security and that being a possibility, man, that's he got dangerous. Financial he got security. Hey, Tim, he got 39 million. Listen, he's doing from that. the team. No, no, no. Oh. He has that no matter what. Right. He has okay. that okay. no matter saying. what. But that's so, what we're so, saying. So what I'm saying, no, so right. So the embarrassment of a team that does not owe you any money of significance okay. to say, no, man, like we're going to cut you too because – because Denver already ripped the Band-Aid off. And so, right, like, we're, going, we're on board all right, also. All right, all right. We're going to find out what he's made of. We're going to find out what he's made of. You can play or you can't. <laughs>